I will present uh, uh, the results on multimodal search of uh, the STREP project iSearch uh, that started in 2010 and it's about to finish uh, in the next uh, three months. My colleague uh, Thomas Steiner from uh, Google will present the interface and also give a short uh, demo of uh, our uh, search engine. And uh, please do not forget that we have, uh, uh, you are uh, able to go through our demo to play with our uh, system uh, in the room next to the coffee area. So please visit our stand because we didn't have that much uh, visitors uh, up to now. Uh, so I will introduce uh, iSearch. Uh, it was a project uh, which uh, had as a goal multimodal search and for the, in this respect uh, we had to provide a unified framework for a multimodal context indexing, sharing, search and retrieval. And uh, we wanted to handle any type of uh, multimedia and multimodal, uh, multimodal content uh, ranging from text, uh, 2D images, videos, 3D objects and uh, audio and combine it also with real world information like time and uh, location and also emotional information, uh, so user related information in general. Uh, in this respect we are fully supporting a uh, user centric uh, search uh, engine and uh, you can uh, also see it in two of our use cases for music uh, retrieval. And uh, uh, fur furthermore we worked a lot on the presentation of the results using uh, novella visualization uh, strategies and uh, we are supporting this in two different uh, settings, also a mobile phone and a high performance uh, PC. So the three main objectives, first of all, is to define a unified, rich unified content description and I will uh, give you more details on that. We call it uh, RUCOD, it's something like a new uh, way of representing uh, multimodal information. Uh, then uh, we worked a lot on the on intelligent content interaction mechanisms and uh, uh, we will present today our interface and we are proud of this. It's Google inspired and Google designed and uh, of course, uh, however, it's iSearch. It's not Google <laughs> only. Uh, and uh, we also have uh, various ways of presenting uh, the results uh, achieved uh, using visual analytic uh, technologies. Uh, we have uh, worked on uh, seven use cases within the project. Two of them had to do with mu music retrieval using expressive embodied queries and also collaborative uh, ways to extract, uh, uh, mu to extract music uh, using uh, social uh, uh, related uh, descriptors. Uh, we had a completely different, uh, since we are multimodal, we can support completely different uh, use cases and we had a use case on uh, search and retrieval of a piece of furniture and also search of retrieval of multimedia content using just uh, the smartphone and uh, information that can be captured by the smartphone. So it could be an image, it could be an audio piece, uh, and uh, this could be used as information to, to search. We had a personalized approach to customer needs, uh, specifically uh, search for a motorcycle of your own. This was the actual use case that we have uh, researched on. And the last two use cases had to do with uh, games. It's a typical one with a 3D game component uh, retrieval and also the retrieval of uh, avatars uh, for uh, games. Uh, these uh, three main layers in, uh, are also depicted in this uh, architecture. You have the, the media layer where we have uh, networked media, uh, real world information and emotional expression and social information. We call it user related information and all of them are combined in uh, the record, the rich unified content description that we have. And uh, we have worked a lot on the interaction by getting individual and also collaborative uh, relevance feedback and uh, recommendation schemes. And uh, as I said, uh, one of our targets was also visualization using visual analytic technologies. So let's start from the rich unified content description. So we wanted in order to be able to support multimodal search, we had to put all the descriptors in one type of uh, representation. That's why we introduced the RUCOD as it's called, uh, which is uh, uh, just one file that we call a content object, which uh, contains all types of low level descriptors. It could be text, uh, image, video, audio, and three dimensional descriptors. Uh, relevant to this specific content, the real world descriptions. Uh, it could be the time, the position, the weather, either uh, RFID tags that could be associated with this content object, and uh, user-related descriptors. 
uh, could be expressive, emotional, or uh, collaborative in a case that the scenario supports such. Uh, let me now get into details of what we call a content object. A content object for us is just a container of various multimedia objects that carry the same semantic information. So one content object may or may not contain all of these types of uh, uh, multimedia information. So it could be a complete content object containing images, text related to these images, video uh, related to them and uh, three-dimensional representation, but it could be just a content object containing only one image without any other type of uh, uh, information. Uh, our idea to perform multimodal search is to exploit uh, various types of similarity. For example, there could be an image similarity between these component objects and a three-dimensional similarity between the others, and utilizing this information, you can have uh, a, a multimodal uh, distance, a multimodal metric to measure similarity. So the idea is to get the three decoded objects, to get the descriptors, to combine them, to perform indexing in each type of uh, these descriptors, and then we are constructing an end-to-end -end, uh, adjacency matrix and uh, extracting from them Laplacian eigenmaps uh, that we can then use as uh, descriptors of uh, the uh, content objects that we have in the database. So finally, what we do is to create a multimodal feature space and compute the distance only in this uh, feature space so that we can have a multimodal distance between these uh, content objects. Uh, let me uh, go now to the presentation of the results. We have a typical way of presenting the results. We are giving information about uh, uh, the object. We are providing thumbnail views. Uh, for example, we have thumbnails for the images. We are supporting uh, for the 3D uh, rendered uh, thumbnails uh, of uh, the three-dimensional object and the slideshows of the keyframes. And we can also have uh, synthetic visual previews from the oral features. But we went a little bit one step further on the presentation. For example, on the visualization of uh, uh, audio features, we have tried to map the MFCC st spectral features, uh, first of all, after dimensionality reduction, we have tried to uh, map them to a shape, to an image with different colors and different shape types. So the shape and the number of uh, the petals, internal and external, and the colors, internal and external, depend on the specific descriptor. So we have a visual representation of the specific descriptor. And in this way, just with a, fair, a glance at the results, you can uh, uh, have an idea of the similarity in terms of... Uh, uh, color and also in terms of uh, shapes of uh, the petals. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, global visualization approaches, we have used a classic one, a panel one, a tree map and the hyperbolic tree one. And uh, furthermore, we have worked on uh, presenting the results in a grid and also in a, a smart way so that we bring uh, similar results closer to the two-dimensional space in this case. And also a similar approach, uh, which is a smart grid, a little bit uh, a combination of uh, both of them. Uh, for the real-world information, we are providing information about location and time, uh, location in form of a map. And uh, the time, you see, uh, you can have an idea on when these documents that you have uh, uh, got as a result when actually were actually created uh, in the timeline from 2006, for example, to to 2009 in this case uh, that I'm showing here. Uh, you can fully adapt uh, the interface. You can also uh, perform filtering in terms of modality, in terms of uh, tags that may be associated with uh, the objects, uh, date, time, and uh, relevance uh, to any type of uh, content. And you can also uh, perform, uh, also tag yourself uh, one of the results and also perform uh, relevance uh, assign relevant or irrelevant items in order for the relevance feedback algorithms to use this information to improve the results. Uh, furthermore, we have advanced uh, interactive approaches for uh, visualization. You see uh, on, on the left there is a tree representation where you can just drag and drop, drop each uh, of uh, these uh, results and uh, assign them to a different category and immediately the whole tree reorganizes and you get uh, a different uh, uh, 
uh, a different uh, structure of uh, this tree corresponding to the relevance information that you have already provided. The same holds on the right side, but a little bit more uh, structured in a grid-like form. Uh, this is all about uh, uh, the visualization and the presentation of the results. I will give the floor now to Thomas to present the interface of uh, iSearch and also give a demo. Um, thank you for the first part of the presentation. So my name is Thomas Steiner. I work uh, at Google Hamburg, but legally it's Google Dublin who is in the project. So, um, yeah, I come from Hamburg. Um, so, okay, when people think of search, um, they think of search as a yeah, search box where they can put stuff. So we decided to take this paradigm also over to the world of multimodal search. And um, now, of course, uh, if you have a search box, you type in something, then you have letters. Um, so the idea was to taking this uh, idea of yeah, what you search appears in the search box also over to multimodal. Um, so if you look at this example, and I will show it later on live, you can see a big search box here, and you can see a couple of uh, different modalities here. The first one is audio, the second one is an image, then we have a sketch, we have emotion, and we have location. So you can see, um, yeah, it's search tokens that fill the search box, and finally you have the big search now um, button. So, yeah, we really try to keep it simple, even if a lot of the yeah, underlying technologies is quite complex or highly complex. Um, but for the user, it should be as simple as using um, the search engine of your choice today. Um, so, I will show this in action now, and you're also invited, as uh, Dimitri said, to uh, come to our demo and see it uh, for yourself. Um, so, yeah, this is the interface as it is now. And below you have the different um, input fields. So for example, with a pen or with a pencil, you can draw a sketch, which is kind of hard to do, but uh, let's just draw a lollipop here, done. And you can see um, what I've painted appears live in the search box. Um, so I could search with this now, but let's add something more. Um, I don't know, uh, well, let's actually put this away because it's not really helpful. Um, so let's use images. So in our interface, we support uh, drag and drop. So um, if you want to upload an image, you can just go like that, select the image, and then let's drag and drop this image over here. And you can see it appears right away. And um, that's a kind of uh, trivial search, so let's just see what it looks like. It takes a bit and it speaks with the back-end server. And uh, hopefully if the Wi-Fi is working, yes, um, we get results back. So you can see now I've searched for um, temple-like uh, buildings in our database. So um, let's uh, start again from scratch and uh, add something more to it. So let's use the temple as before, and uh, now, for example, let's say, well, we're interested in another modality, which could be we search for this temple-like buildings in the UK. So we add um, our geolocation as an additional filter, and then, then we can search again, and the results should be uh, different now. So this is just a combination of two modalities. Um, for uh, different use cases, we can uh, do more. So now you can see it's less results because I filtered geographically, of course. Um, but for other, um, um, for other um, modalities, um, which is not um, visible in this user interface, but for example, for the music use case, we can also search for emotion. Um, so I can maybe quickly show you the other uh, latest interface, which is uh, available here, one second, up, where you can also have uh, emotion, um, where you can simply use a slider interface to attach emotion to a certain, say, music piece. So as I move around the slider, you can see the face moves from happy to sad, and um, the token gets um, updated in real time. As a, as a search something. And then um, another thing is searching for rhythm. So um, we came up with uh, 
Yeah, what is a natural way of inputting rhythm? Of course, it's just tapping like that. So this is what we did. Um, we made this very simple tapping interface where you can input a waltz rhythm like that, one, two, three, one, two, three, and so on. And uh, once it's done, so now it runs for 10 seconds, you can see the rhythm that I just inputted by a tapping on the touchpad very naturally appears here. So now I could search for sad waltz music. I don't know if this makes any sense, but uh, yeah, just as an example. Okay, and one last uh, thing that I wanted to show is uh, using 3D models. So uh, I have prepared some of them here. Uh, so this is uh, using the open source Collada format. I quickly open one so that you can get a feeling of it. This is uh, just a preview. So you can see the Volkswagen Beetle in a 3D uh, rotation view. And if I take this and uh, I activate the 3D tab and pull this thing here, it appears. And um, yeah, you could then search with 3D. So now if you use the 3D model of a car, let's add also a photo of a car. So it was a beetle. So let's add another beetle. Rip. Oh, oh yeah, sure. Uh, whoop. So yeah, th this is a good example actually of uh, interface iteration. So we kind of show an old interface, which is the safe harbor, because the latest, latest iteration um, is not quite stable yet to show it on screen. But um, in the latest interface, what we did was um, we in, uh, uh, enabled drag and dropping directly into the search box. So I kind of already got used to the new interface, <laughs> so I forgot that in the old interface we still had to switch toggles. So let's see if I switch toggles to image, now it should work pull it here, and then I can search for it, and then we should hopefully get images of, or re representations of cars. Let's see if this works. 3D is uh, the most complex case, so it takes a little while before it can uh, yeah, pro uh, uh, calculate the 3D similarity, and then you can see at least some of the results are relevant more or less, um, so maybe this one. And then what you can also do is, if this is what you wanted to search for, you can then find similar things like that. So now on the fly I've generated a new query, and um, yeah, you can see a couple of other results here. So we're not claiming at this point that the results are perfect, what we are claiming is that, uh, yeah, we have tried to make multimodal search as intuitive as possible with all those tokens. So, of course, you can also edit them interactively. So you can say, I remove this one. And then uh, you can, of course, also simply add normal text and then search for it. So, yeah, this is our current interface iteration, one generation behind, because the latest, latest one, um, yeah, was not demoable uh, yet. But uh, you're encouraged to come to the demo and then try to break it at our uh, booth. So here you have seen the current iteration. So thank you, and uh, I think we can take some questions.